This is uh, Stuart Smith. I'm the product owner, one of the product owners at uh, Mernsa Reporting, and I will be uh, leading this uh, webinar today on LOSAP. Um, so we want to welcome everybody. Now, I see, I've heard that some of you guys are not from the northeastern states. So that doesn't mean you don't have LOSAP, but if you don't know what LOSAP is, uh, then you're probably not a LOSAP state, but uh, many of you are. So LOSAP is the level of service um, retirement program for volunteer departments. It can be used for other things. I know there is some level of LOSAP in 43 states, but it's primarily used in the Northeastern states. So what we're gonna focus on today is uh, how we've enhanced our total application to capture LOSAP points and have the ability for the LOSAP administrator to you uh, make it unique for their department because anybody that knows LOSAP me knows that it's very unique for each department. Even though each state has some requirements that are big LOSAP states, there's usually a clause in there that says the local department can do whatever they want to give credit for the retirees so they can, if they meet so many point criteria a year, they will get a retirement at the end of their career. I have put in the chat my email address. So after this uh, webinar, uh, if there's any questions that come up or uh, that we're not able to answer or that you've got some kind of unique situation, please feel free to email me at stuart.smith at emergencyreporting.com so that I can uh, get a conversation with you to see what we're missing. This will be an evolving process. I think we've hit most of it. Uh, I'm very familiar with LOSAP and the uniqueness throughout the states. Each state has, like I said, some unique qualities. So hopefully our new system will allow each state and each department LOSAP administrator to um, to create it, make it so it's unique for their department without having to build custom reports. If you have questions, please feel free to type them in the question uh, log or the chat, preferably the question. Uh, we've got Tom Lewis and Mark Wolf also monitoring the uh, broadcast here today. So they'll be watching for those questions along with me and we'll make sure we answer any questions. If some of those questions just can't be answered via the, the questions, then we'll open up the microphone possibly, and we can just have a, a discussion. But we will have to limit it to the next uh, to the hour time frame as we all have other commitments. Attached to this webinar in the handout section, if you look at your go-to meeting, there is a the user guide has been attached, so that you should be able to access that and download the LOSAP user guide, which I am rendering right now on the screen. The, uh, I wrote the ERS guide to using LOSAP in such a way that it should be clear enough to walk through the whole process of setting up LOSAP in your system if it's been turned on. Now, by default, LOSAP is not turned on for all of our accounts. There is no charge for it. It is a, a free uh, system, but we just didn't want to confuse, confuse thousands of customers who have nothing to do with LOSAP by seeing all the LOSAP settings and what is that for? And I don't understand what LOSAP is and things like that. Again, if you're if you're a LOSAP state, then you're familiar with what LOSAP is. Uh, LOSAP was one of the toughest things to explain to many uh, developers and support people at ERS because they just like explain this again. Uh, you know, they just thought it was a very simple thing, and it's not. So the guide should walk you through all the necessary setup. I'm going to be referencing the guide and going back and forth between the actual application and where it is today and some things that we're adding that we've already found that we need to add to the system to meet some other states uniqueness. Um, with that being said, I think we'll just proceed on. Now, like I said, it is free. All you, if you want to have LOSAP turned on for your account, you just need to count, uh, contact support or your account representative, either one. And all we do is just in the back end is click a button. And then what we'll be going through today will be visible in your system to uh, set up LOSAP. So just contact support or your account representative. Like I said, the guide goes through pretty much step by step. Now, one thing that's new also with emergency reporting that we have not activated for everybody is a new roles and permissions security. This has nothing to do with LOSAP uh, directly. Right now, a lot of you are used to the old security system where you go into the personnel list and you assign people security based on some settings such as this. So I'm in our core application right now. Uh, actually, I don't think I can render because I'm in the new system. Uh, let me see here. You went to the security tab here, and this is where you set up um, security for people here in um, 
the old system. We have a new roles and permissions that we're slow rolling out. Again, it is available to be turned on, but once you move to the new roles and permissions, it allows a lot more granularity. It's much easier to maintain a large group of people quickly. It's a pretty neat system, and I'm sure there'll be a webinar on that uh, in the future if there hasn't been already. But today we're gonna be strictly looking at LOSAP. So back to the guide, if you're using the new roles and permissions um, here, let me go to single screen page and make this view bigger. Then there are some settings. Let me zoom in a little bit more here so they can see because I know we're on the web. Then if you're using the new roles and permissions, you will need to go in because by default, we do not have these settings turned on and give your system administrator access to the LOSAP settings and things like that. They'll make things much, much easier, which I will cover uh, through the demo portion of this uh, webinar today. The next thing is, is like I said, I think we did cover everything uh, that we're gonna need for LOSAP, but what you'll need to do first is actually turn on LOSAP points so that you'll have the ability to track points in incidents, uh, training, and events. And the place we do this, again, the guide walks you through it, is you go to the events module and um, Mint's main page, if I remember right, let's see, go to the events module, where, if I not got security rights here, I'm sorry, I always do that, not the events module, my bad, follow the directions, Stuart. Go to payroll, <laughs> there we go, settings, and right here, so payroll settings, you need to turn on enable points for incidents, for training, and for events. What this does is turn on additional features in the uh, back end so that when you're putting people on incidents, training, or events, there's also new, new columns to track points. Now, many of the customers who were already low SAP before probably were tracking these points, but they, what they didn't have is the ability to really customize low SAP in the system for their unique abilities. But that's the first thing you need to do is just so that the points will show up, which we'll see as we go through the system, uh, where these, uh, these, these three checkboxes, where they reference these modules in adding points to people. I'm gonna go back to the main screen. And the next thing is then to get into the administration side of it. So I'm going to go to administration, and if the LOSAP is enabled, what you will see here is two new settings under personnel. When LOSAP is not enabled for your account, you will not see these. There's LOSAP settings and LOSAP users. I'm going to go to the LOSAP settings. Like I said, under the new roles and permissions, there is the ability to restrict who has access to the LOSAP settings. Typically, this is going to be for the system administ the LOSAP administrator. And what we've done here in the LOSAP settings, this allows the LOSAP administrator to set up a lot of uh, settings unique to their department or their state. Uh, somebody's cleaned all my data out here, which is fine, that's okay. What this first section does, this first expansion box, is allow you to set maximum points for different things. So even though like for incidents, maybe you can earn literally hundreds of points a year based on how you get points for responding, you know, that every department has a maximum that you can only reach, a maximum number of points. So you say you want to edit this and that the maximum number of points for incidents is 25. It doesn't matter how many points you get, the maximum is 25. If for some reason your department does allow unlimited points for incident responses, you can set that, you just leave it at zero and or set it at a thousand or whatever, it'll just keep accumulating them. So this is hard coded for the incidents because there's only one way to get points for incidents, that's responding. Training has the same thing. What is the maximum number of points for training? I'm just gonna set it at 20 just to be a little different. It's usually higher for people. And then the third area that you get maximum points are events. So now what we've done here in the events section of the LOSAP settings is so that you don't have to build these and hopefully they match your event modules. I'm gonna go back to events the events module and event categories. And if we take a look here, uh, a second, I'm sorry, back up a little bit, event types, that's event categories. Well, what we do is we actually capture all of the categories that you have. So this list of categories here is captured into the main page of the, of the LOSAP settings. So I'm gonna go back to LOSAP settings. I was on 2017. And these are the categories from my events page. 
you can see that there's a second page that's why you don't see them all so you can set points for each category not each type in the category but for each category so if you say well they get points for maintenance any any events they take on up under the category maintenance they can get a maximum of 10 points now I know of one customer who has like they, a, a person and a volunteer can get X number of points for maintenance in the first six months and X number of maximum points for the second six months. So what you'll need is just two categories, maintenance for the first six months, maintenance for the second six months. Then it doesn't matter how many event types you capture under that, they will all roll up into that particular category. So again, in here, you can set categories for whatever. Some of you might not use the training module. So you might have a training event that you just capture all training events in here. So realize that these are event categories, not the training module. The top two are restricted to incident module, training module. Everything else under here is from the events categories. Pretty straightforward. Now, while we're looking at the screen, before I move on to the other expansions, is you can see from the dropdown, you have years. So what the system does is it allows us uh, for you to keep the historical data. Typically, low SAP credit for each year doesn't really change as to how maximum points and what you get credit for and stuff like that. But what we do is we do keep the historical record. Throughout this whole process, we kept in mind that, let's say, even though you're tracking the points for each year, 10 years from now, somebody says, well, I know in 2011, I earned you know X number of points. Well, this way, historically, we know what those values were that the administrator set. We know historically what that person did to get points. So when you run the report for 2011, you don't have to worry about anything you change for a current year. It will know what the previous year settings were. So when you roll into the next year, it will be allowed to change those if you want to. Now, by default, we're actually adding in, in the next two weeks. When you do go to the next year, it will roll over all the settings from the previous year automatically. Then you can make modifications to the current year if you want to. Uh, so that way you don't have to retype everything in. Now that's the max points expansion bar. Now I'm going to look at personal categories. We know, um, wow, somebody really cleaned out the system, Tom. Uh, we know that in the uh, individual can capture different things for just being an individual. So maybe they get military leave. If they're on military, then get up to 60 points. I just know that's a New York setting, so I'm going to put that in there. Another one is maybe they were disability uh, for some reason, so they get credit for being getting points even though they were on disability. Uh, disability, they can get points maybe up to 50 points. Just bear with me because I know that there's limits to these. And like, well, they were only military for six months and things like that. I'm going to show you that also. Uh, maybe they get points for um, um, being physically fit. I don't know. And whatever you want, you can create unlimited categories here for an individual to get points that don't apply to events, training, or incidents. So maybe they get 15 points for that. Again, you can create unlimited number of points. When you go to the next year, it will automatically replicate these into the next year, and then you can add or take away or change maximum points or whatever. So this is the, gets us under the personal category, and then we're eventually we're going to show you where you capture all this under an individual. The final area is incident response percentages. Some departments in some states, you just get points for everything you go on. It's an unlimited number of points. It doesn't matter how many calls you make and things like that. Some states or departments say, well, look, you have to at least respond to, let's say, 25% of the calls. So you can just enter in 25. And that means that what the report will do is say, okay, as long as you've responded to at least 25% of the calls, then you get your points uh, that you've accumulated up to the maximum number of points allowed. So it's just a flat percentage. We also did a dynamic percentage. Now we've got a third one coming in the next couple of weeks, but this is one for like New York State that I'm familiar with. They, this allows you to say, well, look, if, my, if a department has less than 500 responses a year, and again, these are all editable here, then as long as they make 10% of the calls, I'll just go ahead and edit this one just so you can see, make, make some sense of it. As long as they make 10% of the calls, they can earn um, 10 points. But if they achieve like 25% of the calls, they can get 25 points. So what it's saying is long, if they hit 10%, but not 25%, then they get just 10 points flat. If they got 25% or more of the calls they responded to, uh, then they can get up to 25 points. 
So in other words, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's no flat percentage. It just says if they hit this percentage, then they get this many points. Anything in between, if they hit at least 25, then they get 25 points. Now, we have a new one coming up because of New Jersey and some customers we were dealing with there. Um, because we're going to base this one. I'm sorry, let me bounce back here. We're going to base this on fire calls and EMS calls. This is a New York thing right here. Some departments don't respond to EMS, so they get credit for everything in fire. Some departments, you have to hit a certain number of fire calls to get points. And if you respond to a certain number of EMS calls, you get points. Uh, so they look at the incidents a little different. We In New Jersey, we have customers who um, basically get points for what range of percentage of calls they fall into. Now, what, this is not the final product right here. What we're going to do is we're going to build it so that you can say uh, what you can make these percentage ranges whatever you want. So if you say, well, and we'll just keep this one here. If response to less than 15% of the calls, you get no points. If you respond 15 to 20% of the calls, you get 10 points, 20 to 30, 20 points. Again, this is all editable by the low SAP administrator. But what we're going to do is we're going to build it so you can put whatever percentages you want in here yourself. And actually, you could have an unlimited number of rows, which doesn't make sense. But you'll build your own rows here. And, and that way, again, you can make unique things where it's not longer a flat percentage and it's all based on all calls. So that's gonna cover that part of the report. Now, there will be LOSAP reports that generate all these things. I'm gonna go back to the product now. So we've kind of set up some things here. So I'm gonna go back to administration. And we have two things here. We have LOSAP users, and I'm gonna to go to personnel list also, just so you can understand what LOSAP users is. So here we have a LOSAP tab. Again, if LOSAP is not turned on on for your account, this tab will not appear. So I'm gonna to go to the LOSAP tab and we'll work here for a second. Individual points and LOSAP history. Now individual points, it will then say you wanna add, it's gonna look for that drop down list that we just created. If you remember, I just created these things. And you say, well, he was on military leave from, uh, let's go to last year. Uh, let's say from July 1st to December 31st. So he was on military leave for six months. And the total annual points allowed is 60 points. We blocked that because uh, that's what the LOSAP administrator says is the – I see your question. I'll get right to it in just a second. Um, that's the maximum number of points. We do not automatically calculate this because some, some departments say, well, don't automatically calculate it for us. We'll just type it in. So typically you get a half a year you get the 30 points, but if for some reason the chief or the low set administrator wants to give them more or less, that's up to them. So again, you can start adding this stuff in here. Uh, again, these, this is all controlled by the low SAP administrator as to what's allowed, but if somebody else is allowed to put this data in for an individual person, they can. And then the other tab here is low SAP history. And what we did here was two things. Now, the points are not being calculated by the system directly, first of all. They're being calculated by reports. And there's going to be about five different reports based on if you're fixed percentage, variable per percentage, variable uh, percentage determined by the department, uh, and work schedules and things like that. So there'll be about five or six reports. One of those reports will apply to you. Uh, but what it doesn't do is translate that data here directly. Plus, we have a lot of customers who are coming on board who have low SAP history from other systems or documentation or whatever. So what we did here is we made this a manual process for right now. So like you said, well, we just came from another vendor and I wanna go ahead and put in some old data for, um, for Stuart Smith or whoever I'm on right here. Uh, you know, so I can just type in qualified you know, by paperwork or whatever. This just allows you to put in his, some historical data here so that you can get rid of your old system, um, your old, um, software that you were having to maintain just so that you could run a report off of. So again, you can put unlimited stuff here. Now I'm going to look at this question here from Rodney. My department gives points for the percentage of calls responded. 30% of the calls is 30 points. Does that option get covered? So uh, Rodney, uh, um, I assume like if they respond to 31% of the calls, they get 31 points, um, something like that. Um, that's a good question. I might need to take that offline with you again with my email address. Right. Okay. So if they, they respond 100% of the calls, then 100 points is the maximum. So that's a good uh, a good uh, system. Let me think about that for a minute. We, if we doesn't meet, if I can't think of a way we can do it with the current stuff, 
we will get that built. Um, so I'm assuming if they rescind one percent of the calls, they get one point and things like that. It's hey, hey Stu, it's Tom. Go yeah. to I'm um, just curious, and I don't know if the answer is correct or not, but in the in the LOSAP configurator. And you can tell me if I'm off base here because I know I'm learning all this new uh, new part of our system too. So if you go to event training and incident max points, mm -hmm. could you set, so this is, can receive for an incident. So in this case, would this be set to one point? No, no, this is the max, this is only the maximum that, so they're saying if they respond to 30% of the call, so it's gonna fall down here in this percentage response percentages. But he would award because the max points per incident, so that would be. No, this is not per incident, this is per year. Per year, okay, got it. Uh, but Rodney, what I think would happen, and it would be very tedious, again, this is not the final UI, UX, what we call the, the graphic on it, uh, but you could basically say is if they respond to 1% of the calls, they get one point, respond to 2% of the calls, you'd have to type in 100 rows. Uh, so it could do it. Uh, you'd have to type in 100 rows one time <laughs> just to get it in the system. So that way it would know if you did 1% of the calls, you get 1.2% of the calls, 2.3% of the calls, 3 points. It could do that. It doesn't have to necessarily be a range. But I'm definitely going to, uh, I'm sure we've got your email address. So Rodney, I'm definitely going to contact you offline after this, uh, sometime later this week or next week. Now, we saw how to set up an individual. I wanted to show uh, what this other thing was. So sometimes, instead of having to go to each individual in your department, what we did is we, again, has a security setting for it, is we allow the uh, somebody in your department who has security rights to be able to just go straight to these people straight from here without having to go personnel, low SAP tab, so on and so forth, you can just start scrolling through people through here really, really quick. Uh, so this is just a quicker access point to get to individual personnel. So I'm gonna go back to the document. So again, we talk about setting up max points for the, for the year, uh, for events, training, and incidents. We talked about giving points for individual personnel, flat percentage, dynamic percentage, ah, and other things. And there are places to capture the points uh, in each module. Uh, hopefully, you're familiar with that. I can show, I will show that. I uh, just want to scroll through here and make sure I check a couple of other things. Okay, one other thing we've worked on, because it is true that some departments have this, I'm going to go back to administration personnel list, so there'll be another report for this that takes these things in consideration. Again, you'll only want run one report, but um, you will have to determine which report you know applies to you. We modified the uh, work schedules here also to take in consideration. Some departments um, do not um, penalize their people for um, if they're actually at work where they cannot get off. Maybe they're a dispatcher um, at, the, at the department. So from seven to, to 1,500 each day for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they get whatever, they, they, are, they are just not allowed to respond. I'm just gonna put some stuff in here real quick to kind of get through this back up. 1,500. So what this, what this will be used for in the report is any any calls for this person if they're running the report for work schedule any call for this for this person here in the work schedule will not be counted against them so let's say there was two calls in this date range and to one of those calls was in this time frame and one of these calls was wasn't so in theory they responded to 100 percent of calls they were eligible or required to respond to this is only if the work schedule applies. If this does not fit your LOSAP pattern, then you just don't fill out a work schedule. Again, you can have multiple work schedules. That way, if they change their work schedule each year, maybe sometime in the middle of the year, you just add another work schedule, uh, you know, for whatever start date and end date. That way, when you run the report, for whatever date range, it's looking at these dates here so that it knows whether or not to count against it or not, um, if it applies to your department the way you capture LOSAP. Um, that way, historically, you can go back and run a report for previous years. We have a question from Brian. Monday still has a training. Monday still has training in time field. Monday still has training. I'm not sure the question. Monday still has training. So let me go to trailing. 
Monday still has a trailing. Oh, trailing ass. I'm sorry. You're just saying I had something. Yeah, probably it, it saw it as bad data, so it knocked it out. Thank you, Brian. I was typing too quick. There we go. So that should be clear now. Let's go back. Right. Thank you. Um, yeah, so you just got to type it in correctly there. Now, I'm going to go to incidents real quick. Just I'm going to go through the three modules just so you see where the points are tracked. Since it's turned on through payroll, if we go to uh, basic info four, and I'm just going to go to this apparatus here, and got Dave Adams right here. So, um, in the right spot. No, I'm sorry. It's been a while since the payroll. So if you go to payroll, payroll is going to have all the people that are on apparatus right here. So what you can say, well, everybody on this call gets one point. So you fill with one point. If I had a bunch of people, it would automatically all put one point for them. We would like to automate this so that if they respond, they always get one point. But that's, it's not automated at this time. I want to go back to basic info four because some departments give credit for people who are not on an apparatus. So again, persons in, personnel involved but not on an apparatus, as long as they're added to this list here, so I'm gonna add them there and save it. When I go to payroll, they will show up there. They should show up there uh, so they can get credit. Did it refresh there? There it is. So again, I can say one point and fill the points. And so this person was not on an apparatus, but they were uh, they were available for the call. So what that covers what we call in quarters. I know in the state of New York, people get credit if they just respond to the station, but they're told to hold at the station for a minute to see if they're needed. But since they did respond to the station, they do get their low SAP points for responding to the call. In the training module, go to the training module, show you where the points are there. Again, as long as it's turned on in payroll. So open a class here, go to people, add agency personnel, click, 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 add. Then here, I've got the points column again, fill it in, and boom, they're getting to get their points for training. And then we'll go to events. And event. uh, actually, we have a new events update module coming out. It's going to make this much easier to do. So I'm just going to open this event, this event type that belongs to the event category administration. I'm going to add a couple of people here. We've got a much more user-friendly events module going to be released here shortly. Again, there are the people assigned to this event, fill points, and then that would show up on the reports. That's the three places you do for the for points for those modules. Again, then anything that doesn't fall in those events goes to the personnel module. The document should be clear enough to just walk you through everything. We do have the reports in progress. One of the uh, first report for flat percentage uh, will be released shortly, but the other ones will be coming very quickly because the only difference between the reports are not whether or not you have flat percentage, dynamic percentage, department dynamic percentage, such like Rodney has, or uh, work schedules apply or not. Everything else is pretty much the same. So at this time, uh, really, we've got quite a bit of time left. So, Mark, I do not have a problem if we can just open up the microphones for anybody as long as everybody didn't talk over each other and we can open up the microphones and let people ask questions instead of having to type them. Okay, yeah, I'll do that in just a second here. I did want to mention I did put in the chat and I made a mistake on my month I typed in. But I, I did put a note here that our virtual Thursday training for roles and permissions is going to be February 15th at 11 Pacific, 1400 Eastern. And let me... See if I can open up their mics. One second. And Stuart, I am having a problem getting that to turn on. Okay. You're muting me. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Um, 
be a way to unmute everybody. Tom, do you know how to unmute everybody? Let me get, let me give it a shot here. Why don't we do this? Um, whoever would like to ask a question, let's just have them do a quick say, I've got a question in the question answer or in the question uh, chat section, and then we'll unmute them one at a time. Okay. So if you have a question, just throw something in the chat or the questions. I have a question. And let's see if we can get you unmuted and um, answer any questions you have. I'm sure there's some idiosyncrasies that we might not have heard about yet. So I definitely want to find those out. Rodney, I definitely will be contacting you. Um, Directly, I think the new system would apply, just be a little tedious to type in. Will the reporting be available before the first quarter 2018 report is due? Will it be ready before you're saying uh, April 30th? The answer is yes, all the reports will be available, uh, Troy. So he needs it by April 1st. Yes. Yeah, we're working on the reports right now. They just, uh, like I said, they're really all the same report. It's just that each report then would have one idiosyncrasy change, you know, related to fix. It's related to the incident response percentage. The rest of the stuff is pretty much static in the same report. Stu, what do you think about showing them some of the existing reports? And I realize that they are some of some of them are certainly agency specific, but as they go and explore reports, they're going to see them, and maybe some would be beneficial to them just to see how the uh, output is from LOSAP reporting. Sure. Well, probably the best thing is let me show you the one we're working on that is in uh, code review. Second, let's happen to the general. I know Cody's working on it right now. What's happened to the recurring? Second, let me find it. Here it is. So guys, what Stu's looking at right now while he's looking for this is this is how we manage feature requests, new reports. Um, it's a tool that um, the product owners and the developers use to continually move the product along. No, nope. this is a different one. Here it is. Stu, there's a question from Joe uh, Joseph. Would we be able to upload a verification document in the LOSAP history section? So are there any ability to attach files here? No, there's not. Uh, that's a good question, but you should be able to attach files to the individual uh, in, the, in the personnel list. Isn't that correct? Uh, can they attach files to an individual? Yes. That, that, Joseph, I unmuted you, so if you have a microphone, certainly uh, uh, speak up. So that is correct. So my recommendation would be if there's no file upload with, with LOSAP, you could certainly on an annual basis upload it to their certifications if you'd like to um, or in their own in their personnel file. But I'm kind of leaning towards the certifications. And Joseph, I will investigate. I don't know if you're unmuted. I will investigate to see maybe if we can add a, a section in the LOSAP uh, part, portion to attach the files there so that they actually sit outside of somewhere else. Joseph, do you have a microphone? If you do, you're unmuted. If not, it's okay. Uh, would that be something you'd want to do on a monthly or annual basis? How would you want to manage the verification document? Oh, no, Mike, that's fine. Yeah, just type, just type it and it would be annual. Okay, do you think in the interim, um, having it as a certification and knowing that you can set it annually to load it into your certifications um, for individuals in the agency, in the certifications uh, tab. Would that be acceptable at, for the moment as the system exists today? Would not be ideal, okay. Good, I thought so we've got an opportunity here. Good, find it under LOSAP. Okay, Joseph, uh, duly noted, and I will investigate that, see if we can get that done before the, uh, in the next six months. I want to get the reports out first. If you're looking at the uh, screen right now, uh, this is the beginnings of report 1739. This is the LOSAP report 
for fixed incident percentage responses, work schedule not applicable, meaning don't even worry about the work schedule. Uh, this is what it looks like a little bit of the layout. So what we're going to show you is the total incident points, also just the number of incidents attended. It should equal, but some departments give more points for some incidents than other. Then we give the total number of incidences so that a person looking at it can know, well, they only attended 50% of the incidents. We show the max incident points allowed by the system administrator, the LOSAP administrator, training points that they've earned that we pull from the training module, maximum training points allowed set by the LOSAP administrator. Now the events, what we do here is we do show the total event points, but what we've done down here below, and I, this is just a screenshot, so I'm going to go back over here to my spreadsheet. What I've instructed the report writers to do is I want to see every event by category, broken to by category and then event type, and then the points they get for it. So in the report for the events, you'll actually come down underneath the name and you'll see a category events attended. Then by category, it'll start breaking out. Maintenance, they attended this one event. And then they also know the maximum number of points for that category. So in this particular case, maximum number of points for maintenance, category is 20 points. Maximum points for cleaning is 15 points. This person got one point for maintenance right here station cleanup on this date and so forth and then we'll total all those points up here under the events point then under personnel points personal points there will be a total here but also under the name we'll, we'll break it down and show how they got those points we'll pull from the system and then the total points here let's see we've got some great questions coming in i got to scroll down Stuart, not okay uh not for their webinar review. He just wants to contact you later. He had to step away, so absolutely. no problem. Yeah, absolutely. Please, and that's why I gave everybody my email. Please make sure you contact me directly. I'll set up a time to meet with you. I know that LOSAP has a ton of video secrecies by department even, even though the states have laws or guidelines or bills or whatever, there's usually a clause that says the local entity can do whatever they want and we're gonna to try to match that. What we wanted to get away from it at emergency reporting is having to write unique reports for each individual. We hopefully, we're gonna give enough settings to the LOSAP administrator that they can build whatever settings, requirements, max points, minimum points, percentages, unique categories and things like that. And that way then they can basically out of a handful of reports, you know, run the report that applies to them that captures all those settings. Okay. Any other questions? Again, if you're not a LOSAP department, and probably a lot of this is uh, Greek, uh, but it, I know some departments want to use it just to track volunteer participation. Really has nothing to do with LOSAP and retirement, but just va validation that their volunteers are doing enough to be stay on as an active volunteer. Here in Texas, where I live, my volunteer department, they have criteria that they need to meet just to stay as an active volunteer. They can't just be a volunteer and never do anything. And so they follow a type of LOSAP system. And it's really just to show that they're participating enough to stay active on the list or clear them off the list to let another volunteer on the list because they are restricted to the number of volunteers they're allowed to have in the department. This would also be a particularly good tool for the career departments that have your volunteers. I know like Phoenix has the red shirts up there. Uh, to track their participation. If you have fire corps or cert programs in your agency um, with volunteers supporting your career personnel, this might be a really good tool. Yes. So uh, please, anybody on this broadcast, Stuart.Smith at emergencyreporting.com, please just drop me a quick email and say I'd like to talk. Uh, Rodney, if you could do that, that way I get your contact information quicker. Uh, just drop me an email. I will set up a time to have a conference call with you. Uh, so that we can make sure we're going to meet the needs of everybody. Again, LOSAP is, is uh, not complicated, but unique to everybody. Uh, we'll give it another minute or two to see if there's any other questions. I hope this is going to help make things life easier. It's going to el eliminate the uh, need for custom reports and things like that. It makes more sense to find that. That's just that. Okay. And Joseph, I already made a note about the attachment of a document. But again, we are saving the data historically in all every way we can so that theoretically, as long as you put the data in the system, it will be there so you can run the report for a previous year. Uh, 
and get the exact same report you ran at the at that end of that current year, that year. So uh, we we're not just assuming that nothing changes. So that's why we have the date settings up here, year settings up here, so that the low SAP administrator can make subtle changes to each year and not affect historical data. Hey Stu, just a thought for the group too that on the certification, you know how we have the ability to generate certi certifications upon completion of a JPR. I'm wondering if that could some of that that code could be repurposed here and and generate a certificate for them so they don't even, they don't even have to upload it. It would just create it for them if they wanted to. Yeah, I mean one thing we don't have is what is the total number of points somebody needs to achieve to be credited for LOSAP for that year? Uh, so, because that's different for each department. Um, yeah, it would be manual creation. They would just click, okay, go ahead and create a certification yeah. for LOSAP, and it would show the points and percentages for that individual, and the system would create it kind of like it does for training certifications. Right. That might be cool. Does anybody have any other questions? Just throw a something, let us know quickly that you have a question. Otherwise, uh, I hope people that are using going to be using LOSAP, just again, contact support and say you'd like LOSAP turned on. And if you didn't get a copy of the user guide from the handout here today, just have support email you a copy of the uh, ERS user guide uh, when you contact them so you can learn how to start setting it up. Stuart, we all need LOSAP turned on for all of Carroll County, Maryland companies. Tom, if you want to handle that, that'd be great. Yeah, we can do that. Um, yeah. I can, I can start turning it on now for them. Sure. I don't know. I mean, maybe you can how do many, it. How many uh, different departments or ER customers do you have there, uh, Troy? Do you know offhand? Is it a single agency or multiple agencies? My conversation with Troy, I think it was like 17 or 18 in that county. 15. 15. I knew it was okay. 18. Okay. I can have that done for you by the end of the day. All right. Well, we still then I guess we're ready. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, what I need you to do, though, so we have documentation of it, um, Troy, is send a ticket in to support, to support at emergencyreporting.com saying was attended the webinar, talk with Tom, need these 15 agencies uh, switched over to LOSEP, and I'll do that for you today. I'll start doing it now, but we, we just need to have the documentation in the system. Got it. Excellent. Thanks, Troy. Stuart, I'll point out too that that LOSAP guide is available in the knowledge base. Oh, okay. So any user that needs it can uh, go to the support tab, go down to the knowledge base, and pull it right up there. All right. Well, again, Stuart.Smith at emergencyreporting.com. Don't hesitate, drop me an email, and I will get in touch with you for anything that we might not have covered or that's unique to your department. I'm good. All right. If there's no other questions, uh, Mark, did anything else you'd like to say in closing? Uh, no, I don't accept to. Thanks for your participation in Virtual Thursday. And we're rocking and rolling with these. We have a full slate of them the first and third Thursday scheduled throughout the year. Please uh, keep an eye at the top of your home screen, and you'll see when we're uh, presenting those and what the topic will be. So uh, thanks again for participating. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you.